One of the dreams in AI has been an advanced personalized assistant and tutor like a Jarvis. An early version of this is already here. It can watch your screen or see through your camera and give personalized tips and feedback in real time. I've been using this a lot recently and it's super helpful. I'll show what it's good at and where it struggles. The parts where it excels feel magical. This is Google AI Studio's real-time assistant. So I demoed it on my computer in a recent video I did, but that warrants a much deeper dive because it can do a lot more than what I showed. I'll get to that in a minute, but first I'll show an example with the phone version. This is one I recorded a couple days ago. To use it, this is at aistudio.google.com. And this is all free, by the way. You just click the dropdown in the top left, then click stream real time. Now click the microphone and allow access, then click the camera icon and select your camera. How does this plant look to you? The plant has several leaves that are drooping and yellowing, which could indicate that it needs to be repotted. Is that what you were thinking as well? Yes, I'd like to repot it. Can you help me with that? Sure, I can help you with that. First, do you have a new pot and some potting mix ready? I do, um, and this is the type of plant I have. Okay, it's a spathophyllum, also known as a peace lily. That's good to know. Do you have your new pot and the potting mix ready? Yeah, is this potting mix good? Yes, the miracle Grow organic indoor potting mix should work well for your peace lily. Now, are you ready to start repotting the plant? Yeah, should I add some of this stuff to it? <clears throat> yes, adding perlite to the potting mix can help improve drainage and aeration, which is good for peace lilies. Do you want to mix it with the potting mix now? Yeah, let's do it. I wasn't using a tripod for my phone, so the rest of the video didn't turn out too great, but you get the idea. I kept going back and forth and repotted the plant. And this showcased how good the vision is. So I didn't explain what the things were that I showed it. It had to read the name of the plant and the bag quickly and had information about each item and it understood the context. So it nailed it with those. And I'm sure you can imagine tons of use cases for this. So I wanna move on to the web version where I've been using it the most. It can be a big time saver when used in the right situation. But before that, I wanna show a different tool that also feels magical. With this tool, you can create your own web apps from scratch in a couple minutes without writing a single line of code. It's called Hostinger Horizons. They're the sponsor of today's video and it's like having your own AI powered software engineer. The best way to explain this one is with a demonstration. So I wanna build a workout tracker because I don't like most of the apps that are either paid or feel cluttered with way more features than I need, so I'll build one myself. Build a workout tracker where I can track the workout weight and number of reps. I'd like it to include a timer that I can start between workouts to time my rests. Also a place to add notes on each workout. I'll send it like that. Try to give as much instruction as you can for exactly what you want, but if it's not perfect and just off the top of your head like this one, that's fine. I can modify it once it builds this version. That was about one minute and it built the full first version. I'll test it out and see how it works. I'll just fill out each field, then click add workout. And that's not quite what I was looking for. I guess I wasn't very precise with my prompt. I'd like each workout to have a list of exercises that I can write out. So here it is, I filled out some of this. That was closer, but I want the workouts to be reusable. And these edits come back faster than the original build. You know, it makes changes in like 10 to 30 seconds. So I filled out some of the exercises and this one is on the right track. And now I know a bit more of what I want so I can give it better instructions. All right, I skipped through some of this. I went back and forth a few more times. Now I can come up here and click deploy. And just like that, it's been deployed. Super easy with no third-party connections. And something else that's nice is they're an all-in-one solution. So back on the dashboard, I can manage the hosting, domain, and email all in one place for all of these I've created. But back in here, I'll stick with the default link it created. All right, and just like that, here it is. So I'm gonna just add two workouts with some different exercises really quick. All right, now under my workout plans, I have the condensed version in the dropdown. There's these little handles so I can switch up the order. On this other one, I had some notes that show up underneath too. Then when I click the play button, I can adjust the weight or reps and I can add notes. Then I click complete workout when I'm done. Over on history, I can see all my past workouts and track my progress of weights and reps. And there's this countdown timer I can click between sets. That's definitely helpful instead of having to switch screens. And I'll just jump cut to the final 10 seconds where it has that pulsing animation. I thought that was pretty cool. There's all sorts of little details like that you could add. This was super easy to make and I like to keep it simple. So I prefer this over most of the apps out there. The fact that this was so easy is just incredible. There's so many apps I use on a regular basis that I can customize and build myself tailored exactly how I want them and without all the fluff. I think the software world is going to change dramatically with all the new capabilities like this. If you wanna try it out, click the link in the description.
That will take you to select a plan. All of these have a 30 day money back guarantee and you can use the code Futurepedia for 10% off whichever plan you choose. So jump in and see what cool and useful web apps you can create. All right now I'll go back into the Google AI Assistant, this time in the web version. So it's really easy to get started and there's a bunch of other tools in here, but what we want is stream real time. Now over on the right is the model it uses, which is a lot better than the previous version. And there's the output format for audio or text. I definitely prefer audio. Then there's a lot of different voices you can choose from. Puck is my favorite. And depending on what you're doing, there's tools for code and function calling. You can also add search. I won't need those for any of my examples, but they are there if you need them. To get started, you just click on the microphone. And if it's your first time using this, some permissions will pop up that you need to approve to get it going. Okay, it sounds like... I'm gonna disconnect for a second so it doesn't talk over me. But after that, we'll select video source and you can use your webcam right here or I will select screen. You can do the entire screen or just a window. A particularly helpful and time-saving use case for this is learning new software. So I'm going to use Blender for the very first time to demo this. It's something I've wanted to learn, so I'll just give it a go and see what happens. So share screen. All right, this is my very first time using Blender. Can you help me with this? Sure, I can help. What do you wanna do with Blender? I'll start with something simple. Can you show me how to make a house? Sure, I can help you with that. First, let's start by scaling the default cube to resemble a house. Do you know how to scale objects in Blender? No, I don't. Okay, no problem. To scale the cube, first, make sure it's selected and then press the S key. After pressing S, you can move your mouse to increase or decrease the size of the cube and then click to confirm the scale. Would you like to try that? Okay, I've got a bigger cube now. Great. Now that you've scaled the cube, we can move on to shaping it more like a house. Do you want to try extruding the top face of the cube to create a roof? Yeah, we can do that. Um, first, can we make it more rectangular? Okay, to make it more rectangular, you can scale the cube along one axis. Would you like to try scaling it along the X, Y, or Z axis? Yes. Okay, to scale the cube along the x-axis, press S, then X. Then, move the mouse to scale it and left-click to confirm. Would you like to try that now? Okay, I think I got it. Let me just test this out for a little bit and get the right size. Okay, it looks like you're scaling the cube along the y-axis now. Is that correct? And do you have the size you're looking for now? Yeah, this looks good. Okay, now that you have a rectangular shape, are you ready to extrude the top face to create a roof, or would you like to adjust the shape further? Um, well, first, it looks like it's not like on the grid. It looks like the grid kind of goes into the middle. Isn't that supposed to be the ground? Can I like move it up or something? Yes, you are right. The cube is intersecting with the grid. To move the cube up, you can press G to grab, and then Z to constrain movement to the Z axis, then move the mouse and click to set it in place. Would you like to try that now? Okay, that looks good. Now let's move on to the roof. Great, let's move on to the roof. To create the roof, we'll use the extrude function. First, you need to switch to edit mode. Do you know how to switch to edit mode? No. Okay, to switch to edit mode, press the tab key. This will allow you to edit the individual parts of the cube. Would you like to try pressing the tab key now? Yep, got it. Okay, now that you are in edit mode, you should see the individual vertices, edges, and faces of the cube. To extrude the top face, first, select the top face by clicking on it. Do you see how to select the top face? No, it doesn't seem like it's doing anything. Okay, it looks like you might be in vertex or edge select mode. To select a face, you need to switch to face select mode. In the top left corner of the 3D viewport, there are three icons. The rightmost icon, that looks like a square, is the face select icon. Click on that to switch to face selection mode. Do you see that icon? Uh, okay, there we go, I got it selected. Great, now that you have the top face selected, you can press the E key to extrude it. After pressing E, you can move your mouse to extrude the face up and then click to confirm the extrusion. Would you like to try that now? Um, yeah, I did it. Okay, you have now extruded the top face and created the base of a roof. Do you want to further modify this roof or would you like to move on to adding other elements to your house? I want to modify it so it looks like a roof. 
Okay, to make the roof look more like a typical roof, you can select the edges and then collapse them to a single point. This will create a pointed roof. To do this, you need to switch to edge selection mode by clicking on the leftmost icon that looks like an edge, then select the edges. You see that icon? Okay, should I select one edge or both? You should select all of the edges of the top face of the roof. To select multiple edges, you can hold the shift key while clicking on the edges. Okay, Would you like to try that now? Edges. Okay, now that you have all four edges selected, you can press Alt and then M to merge them. When you press Alt plus M, you will see a menu where you can select at center to merge all the selected edges at their center point. Would you like to try that now? Okay, I see. Yeah, that looks good. Great. You have now successfully created a basic house shape. Do you want to add any more details to the house? I went back and forth a lot, so I'll speed this up. Now here is my completed house. I think this is absolutely amazing. I was able to make this my very first time using Blender. I know this is a simple house and not perfect by any means, but that is pretty awesome that it worked out. And then once you disconnect, you can scroll back through everything you set up here and see everything you did. Now, one thing is it does cut the streams off after 10 minutes. So you'll need to start a new stream anytime you get past that. Then just give it a quick refresher on where you're at. And this was just a good way to demo this. That's not how I would recommend you learn a new software, especially a complicated one like Blender. A better option would be watching a few tutorials or taking a course. Then as you start making your first projects, turn on the real-time assistant. So anytime you get stuck or you just can't quite remember something you learned, instead of having to go back through the course or look through all your notes, you can just ask for a refresher on that specific thing. So I think that is the best way to use this. That's what I plan on doing with Blender. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, but I'll show an example like that. So I know a lot about Premiere already but maybe I need a refresher on just some specific little thing. VO2 from Google is finally available. How do I fix up the audio on this Premiere clip? To fix the audio, select the audio track and then go to the audio tab in the effect controls panel where you will find the volume and channel controls. Is there something specific you're trying to fix with the audio? I just wanna make it sound better. What effects should I use? To make the audio sound better, you can try using audio effects like an equalizer to adjust frequencies, a compressor to reduce dynamic range, or a denoiser to reduce background noise. Would you like me to go into more detail about these effects? Which one should I use first? Generally, it's a good idea to start with the denoiser effect to remove background noise, then an equalizer to adjust the tonal balance, and after that a compressor to even out the volume levels. Would you like help with how to use any of those effects? Okay, I've got the denoiser, then you said a compressor. Yes, after the denoiser, you can add a compressor. Would you like help with adding the compressor to your I audio track? I usually use the multiband compressor, is that a good one? Yes, a multiband compressor is a good option, especially if you want more control over specific frequency ranges in your audio. Is there a good you preset like to learn here I can use? How about broadcast, is that a good one? The broadcasting preset is a good starting point, as it can help even out your audio and make it more consistent. Would you like me to help you with applying that preset? Okay, I applied it, then what did you say after compressor? After the compressor, the next effect I mentioned was an equalizer, which would allow you to further fine-tune the frequencies of your audio. Would you like to add that now? What's the best equalizer that's easy to use? For an easy to use equalizer, the parametric equalizer is a good option as it allows you to adjust specific frequencies with a good level of control, but isn't too complicated. Would you like to add that? Yeah, I added that. Can I just use a preset for that one too? Yes, you can use a preset for the parametric equalizer. To do so, click on the custom setup button to access the presets. Would you like help choosing a preset? Yeah, I've got it open. Which one should I use? Okay, to help choose a preset, what specifically are you hoping to achieve with the equalizer? For example, are you trying to reduce muddiness or boost clarity? 
It's for my voice. Most of these are music related. So should I, which one should I use that's for my voice? Since this is for your voice, you could try the vocal enhancer or speech presets within the parametric equalizer. Okay, vocal these enhancer. Are just... I've got that. Great. So now you have the denoiser, the multiband compressor, and the parametric equalizer with the vocal enhancer preset applied. Is there anything else you'd like to adjust or add? VO2 from Google is finally available for everyone. It's been in beta for a while, so I've been watching the videos other people made, and it's seemed like the best video. Now, this is just scratching the surface of the use cases. I do want to throw some caveats in here, though. This tool is not perfect. I've definitely run into some walls where it makes mistakes, or worse, walks me through a bunch of completely wrong steps. There has been very frustrating times using it, more than once. But other times, it has been incredibly helpful. So basically, this is like any of the current AI tools, use it with that understanding. I'm definitely excited about future versions of this tool or others like it. Now, if you wanna go more in depth on learning AI on Futurepedia, we have over 20 comprehensive courses on how to incorporate AI into your life and career to get ahead and save time. You can get started for free using the link in the description or check out this video with 13 AI tools that can save you a thousand hours in 2025.